and welcome to this video on creating an invoice for a booking in your calendar. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, we'll guide you through how you can do this in your Hallmaster invoicing add-on. Let's get started. Now, before we begin, you should make sure that you've completed all of your venue's setup steps. For a detailed guide on setting up your account, you can find our video on creating your account on our channel or in the description box below. On to creating your invoice. First, navigate to the Bookings menu and find the booking you'd like to invoice. Click on the invoicing icon, shown here in blue. This will take you through to the Manage Invoices page, which will show you any existing invoices for the selected booking. If you see this blue bar, this means that there are previous bookings for this customer that haven't yet been invoiced, and can be included in the invoice that you're about to create. For now, press the Create New Invoice button. The first field is for the invoice number. If you've set this up for your venue, then this will already have been filled in with the next invoice number in the series. You can also freely type into this box to choose your own invoice number if needed. Below this is the additional info field, where you can add any extra information that may be needed, such as a purchase order. This additional info will also appear in the invoice. The invoice date field will default to today's date, but can be changed to any date. In payment term, you can set how many days the customer has to pay this invoice before it is labelled as overdue. There are two options here to choose from. Days from issue means that the time the client has to pay the invoice starts from the day that the invoice is issued, whereas fixed date lets you set a specific date as the deadline for payment. In the billing address section, you can choose from the list of addresses you've set up for this customer. This address box is also freely editable, so you can type anything you'd like here. Below that is the invoicing email address. This is where the invoice will be sent, and can be changed if the address is different to the one belonging to the person who made the original booking. Next we come to the booking dates section. If the booking you've selected is a single booking, then just that date will show. But if it's part of a booking series, then all of the uninvoiced dates in that booking will show. You may see this blue bar with the tick box. This means that there are other uninvoiced bookings for this customer that are not currently being shown. You can tick the box to include these in the list. You'll see below that all of the dates are grouped into months and have a tick box next to them. Tick the box for any dates you'd like to include on this invoice, or you can tick the box next to the month name to include all of the dates in that month. Each selected date will then appear listed below with the cost of that booking. Each of these boxes can be manually edited if needed. You will also see these blue, green and red flags, which indicate the status of a booking. These can be used to filter the booking dates. The additional line items section can be used to add any extra fees to the invoice, such as deposits, credit notes, admin fees, etc. You will see any line items that were added to the selected bookings have automatically been added here. As with the booking dates, the price boxes can be manually edited here according to the rate assigned to them. At the bottom you will see the total, along with the tax rates added where applicable. At the very bottom of this section, you will see the final total of the invoice. The comments field can be used to add any extra information to the invoice, and will appear on the document generated. For example, this invoice covers the dates shown below. Lastly, you'll come to the ad hoc text box. If you've added the extra text macro to your invoicing email template when setting up, Anything you type in this box will appear at that point in your email. You can use this text box to add some extra information to the email that's sent out to your customer. You should note that anything you type here isn't saved for later invoices, and is just used for adding text to this email. When you're done, press Save and Send Invoice Email to send the invoice to the customer, or just press Save to save your changes and return to the invoice list. You should now see that your new invoice has just appeared in your invoice grid, Comparing these three invoices, we can see the colour coding, which tells us the current status of the invoices. Green means that an invoice has been fully paid, yellow means partially paid, and red means that payment is still required. We can also see if an invoice is overdue, and by how many days. You can click on this black triangle to view a detailed look at an invoice, and the individual days for which this invoice has been made. Here, you can press the download button to save a PDF copy of the invoice.
Now that you know how to create an invoice in Hallmaster, click here to watch another of our videos, or click here to subscribe to our Hallmaster YouTube channel, where you'll find more helpful hints and tips on how to get the most out of your Hallmaster account. Thanks for watching.